guys thank you so much for tuning in welcome back to my channel and yes today we have the lessons from mr bishthamija i'm really looking forward to the questions and the answers well, i hope that these questions and answers can help solve some of those doubts which aspiring authors and writers always have so come let us talk to him you know basically for aspiring writers do you think one can write without reading and do you guide a person should just read a genre which one wants to write or one should read everything there is no hard and fast rule depends on what you reading for so if you want to write crime my advice and it is my opinion it's it's nothing hard fast is if you read in the crime genre then at least you know what's out there right you know what is selling you know what is the gap in the market if mm -hmm. if you basically then start writing what is already available mm -hmm. now the question is that why would someone pick up a new author mm -hmm. when the already established author is mm -hmm. has the same it's like you try making a new cola and say okay, it is coca cola and it's something cola why would i buy why would i not go and buy coca cola unless you tell me mm. that to cola has something mm. different so a new voice a new voice a new way of uh, narrating the story uh, narrative is quite important how do you treat the subject could be important now in crime there are like as they say in storytelling there are seven stories mm. there's some whole thing so you can have a romance and then vendetta and stuff so mm -hmm. the treatment of the subject and the mm. narrative so if it's already out there and it's mm. already written by Harlan Coben Mm. you writing will not sell mm. because mm. why would someone pick up unless you discount it even then it will not sell mm. so get a new voice to know what's there and mm. then make up where's the gap how do i fit in how is my story different to others it's not good bad ugly it's how is it different why would it stand out why would a publisher put money mm. behind me because at the end of the day we write mm. stories give it to publishers mm. whether it sales or not the loss is not ours the loss is publishers so mm. what does the publisher see in this that's mm. not currently available mm. that can be marketed and mm. therefore will sell at the end of the day it could be the best piece of piece of fiction literary mm. writing but if it doesn't have a market mm. the world we live in if mm. it doesn't make good sound business sense it will not because mm. you will not find a taker there So yeah, read anything, and I read more for uh, language than because English is my second language. Okay. So I read more for language, and and how we speak is different to how we write. Mm -hmm. But you can read it. How many times was your work rejected, sir? And how did you face rejection? I lost count. I mean, I my first book, nothing lasts forever. I finished writing in 2008. Obviously, it was the first draft. and then it went to several rounds of people editing you know amateur editing is that say ye laga le wo kar le and then i started i think i started sending to uh, publishers uh, by middle of 2000 2009 mm -hmm. and in the in the day that time they said no you you can't send us online you have to send us a printed copy mm -hmm. now printed copy three chapters ye karke wo karke i found out that the first parcel i sent was 30 30 pounds Mm -hmm. and i said the paper is heavy and they mm -hmm. want it printed on you know double spacing mm -hmm. not on two sides mm -hmm. so then i found someone in india who was willing to do it for me mm -hmm. and uh, the first book got published middle of 2010 so it took mm -hmm. me a good one year plus mm -hmm. after i was ready to submit not when i finished okay. and i think anyone i approached called i mean i don't know because i didn't approach people directly but mm -hmm. anyone my friend approached from bombay mm -hmm. uh, they got a no that's why we found finally found a publisher and published in 2010 okay and uh, when you make multiple layer plots do you first sketch them on paper uh, as uh, per chapter wise or you don't uh, do no, I don't write? Write. no i i don't do that kind of uh, method writing okay if it's a serial killer like in lipstick or in bandy bazaar i what i do is i do a small uh, flow chart because what happens is because it's a serial killer you'll have to show three or four or five or six murders so by the time you get to the six you should forget what happened in the first and when happened so i make a flow chart but largely i i i i am free flow after the beginning and the end it's more of free flow but there are people who would do chapter by chapter summaries and then expand it okay 
and uh, sir did you get your work edited before uh, submitting it to the publisher as you were mentioning about the editing part was the editor does his own edit the publisher does his own editing so did you get a um, external editor and then so, uh, I, uh, yeah. so what i have is i have a friend who's very good in i mean he doesn't miss a missing comma as i say so he does the first thing and then we kind of this and that's more a bit of editing more of proofreading Mm-hmm. and then uh, my agent does the editing or tells me what i should change mm-hmm. then the publisher takes over and then again we still find mistakes in the rules so <laughs> it's 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 i don't know it's a, it, i think what happened and you can't blame anyone is proofreading as a skill has gone out of business with the there was a time where every word used to be read and they they were they were professional proofreaders so i don't think we have proofreaders left in india this more relying on computers which make errors like they make and therefore the errors translate into the final copy which is very frustrating for an author because when you read it you always write to the author saying there's a mistake the yeah, i also spotted it after publishing so it's it's a i try my best but it still gets changed because the person at the end who's pressing the button to publish will make changes will send it to you and if i read my own text the 10th time there's hardly anything that goes in because i know the story by heart and you miss the so obvious errors because you just skipping through the text so that's that it's it's always get good to get it edited proofread before you send it to someone and uh, sir how many words do you target in a day i like writing no i have no i have no target as such if i write okay. I, I, i can write so currently it's uh, you know closed everywhere other mm-hmm. there's a cafe behind my house where i go he's given me a wifi for one mm-hmm. coffee i sit there for about 2 hours mm-hmm. sometimes i can finish a full chapter sometimes mm-hmm. i just sit there and have a coffee and come back what i do uh, regularly is uh, if if an idea comes into my mind or if there's something that i think can logically mm-hmm. fit into the plot mm-hmm. i'm writing or even for future i may mm-hmm. take notes on my iphone so okay. if you when you go and say it, those notes obviously come into your gmail and you know oh yeah this is you know it's like when we appear for exams so you had notification uh-huh. a point bullet point which uh-huh. you can later expand and build into this so that i keep doing regularly thank you so much sir thank you it was uh, learning from you really uh-huh. and i i'm really grateful for the interview thank you so much sir thank right. you so guys this was my series with mr vish the major on the subject of crime fiction plus he has also given us tips i hope that from those tips you can find answers to those questions for which you were struggling till then till then when till then tomorrow 7:30 pm do tune in and i'll be waiting till then you know what you need to do one more thing subscribe subscribe so tomorrow 7:30 pm bye take care